If you want to win more tennis matches, you've clicked on exactly the right video because you're about to learn how to copy the playbook of Daniil Medvedev to instantly improve. My name is Ian and over the last 16 years, I've helped more than a million tennis players improve through my videos, podcasts, and top rated book on Amazon. Let's dive right in. The first strategy we're gonna unpack, I know is going to get some eye rolls out of the gate, but I just wanna ask you directly, do you actually want to win more tennis matches or not? If the answer is yes, then please stick with me and be patient. Because the first strategy is simply hit the ball cross court more often. Now I know a lot of people think that the style of Daniil is boring and people think that being consistent in general is boring, it's not exciting, but if you want to win more matches, then there's a lot of reasons why hitting the ball cross court is smart. Let's unpack those real quick before we get to some specific examples. So let's pretend you're in the middle of a singles points and you've just been pulled out to your forehand side, you're making contact with the ball right here on the edge of the singles court. And let's just say on paper, just for instructional purposes, you've got two main choices here. You can aim for the yellow X, which is a down the line shot, or you can aim for the blue X, which is a cross court shot. When you aim for the yellow X, the court is shorter in this direction compared to cross court. You have less physical space to aim for. The net is also a little bit higher towards the sideline than it is in the middle, so you have less margin for error aiming over the top of the net. Timing is also more difficult. When tennis players miss time a swing, it tends to be a little bit late. If you aim for this yellow X and you miss time your swing a little bit late, the ball's gonna end up landing here, out of bounds. And finally, it's more running when you aim for the yellow X. The correct position, I don't have time to get into this right now in this video, but the correct position to get to by the time your opponent gets to that next shot is to this yellow X here. Notice it's about twice as far is the blue X, which is where you need to recover to if you hit cross court. So that blue X cross court, the court is longer. The net is going to be lower. If you miss time that cross court target and you're a little bit late, then the ball is gonna land here instead of landing out of bounds. So you're still in the point and you only have to recover to the blue X instead of to the yellow X. So when you aim down the line in general, you've got lower margin for error, more likelihood of making a mistake, and more running. How do most points end in tennis? With somebody making an error. Most points end with errors, even among professional players that we see on TV. So statistically speaking, the odds of being successful aiming for the blue X are just simply higher than if you aim for the yellow X across the span of dozens and dozens or hundreds of points. So with those things in mind, watch these couple of points with Medvedev over on the far side. And let me be really clear, I'm not saying you have to adopt his style of play. I'm not saying you have to be a defensive baseline player or a counter puncher in order to be a good tennis player. Just simply take away the basic principle that hitting cross court is going to minimize your errors, minimize your running, and maximize the pressure and the number of shots that your opponent is going to have to hit. You don't have to play exactly like him to just learn from that lesson. I'm also not saying that you have to hit every shot cross court in order to be a great tennis player. In fact, there are times and places in singles where you absolutely need to be able to change direction and go down the line. Let's go ahead and unpack one so that you can get a sense for how to make that decision in an, an intelligent way. So in the middle of this point example, as Medvedev is hitting cross court, cross court, cross court, all of a sudden he chooses to go down the line on this shot right here. And let's deconstruct this and take a look at why. Novak is starting from this corner all the way over on his backhand side, hitting a forehand. Then Medvedev hits cross court again, and look at how far Novak has to move in order to get to this next shot. He's traveling all the way across the entire width of the court and sliding into a forehand and going back right in the direction that Medvedev was hitting the previous shot from, which means his movement is minimized. He doesn't have very far to go. He's got lots of time to set up and be in balance and be able to do what he wants with this shot. So he's picking and choosing a time on purpose when his opponent is off the court, off balance, and he is 
inside the bounds of the court and in balance. And so that's why in this particular shot, within this particular point, he's making the decision to change the direction of the ball and go down the line. He understands he's got more work to do to get over to the other side of the courts. He understands there's inherent risk. And so he's being choosy and going in this direction at this particular time on purpose. And that's something we can all learn from to be a little bit more intelligent about when we go down the line. If this video has already been helpful, it would really mean a lot if you would click the like button. Thank you so much for supporting my videos. Other reasons why you might want to go down the line is if your opponent is off balance or they have a huge weakness on that side of the courts, or if you want to change the pattern and start hitting cross court shots in the other direction that you have been. There's lots of reasons why down the line might be smart, but please just take away from this that in general, most points end with somebody messing up. And so if we take the higher percentage route with the less amount of running, statistically over the long run, you're going to be more successful. If you're not exactly sure how you can hit down the line versus cross court and be really precise and accurate, just stay tuned. I'll link to a lesson at the end of this video that will show you exactly how to do that. The second big lesson that we can take away from Medvedev and immediately apply to our own games to win more points and more matches is how he forces his opponents to just hit one more ball. His hustle and his determination and his defense are incredible. Again, I'm not advocating for you changing your style of play, but if you can adopt a couple critical, practical things into your own game, you can force your opponents to have to hit more shots, have to aim closer to the lines, and win more free points because of your level of hustle around the court. Here's four really practical ways that you can put more pressure on your opponents and be more difficult to beat. Number one, aim for big targets, especially as your opponent kind of gets control of points, they get you on the run, they get you a little bit off balance. If you can give yourself a large margin for error, remember cross court is really smart, but more specific than that, give yourself a solid six, eight feet inside the lines. The goal here is not to force your opponent to hit the toughest shot possible, it's just to force them to have to hit one more ball, even when you're in a lot of trouble. It's tempting to just slap a ball down the line and try to come up with a hero shot, but just aiming for a big target when you're in trouble puts the pressure right back on your opponent and forces them to close it out. Also, give yourself lots of margin over the top of the net. Not only will that give you more safety, but it gives you more time to recover and again, stack more pressure on your opponent because they see you're getting back in a good position. And the two bounce rule is simply commit to yourself every time you walk out onto the court that I will run full intensity, full effort until the ball bounces twice on my side of the court. I don't care whether you think you can get there or not. I don't care how far away it seems. Just run full speed until the ball bounces for the second time. You'll catch your opponent off guard. You'll catch them with their guard down and relaxing because they think the point is over and you'll force them to have to hit more shots to beat you. Finally, take big long steps, not small ones when you're in trouble. When you adopt those habits point after point, game after game, your opponent is going to feel the pressure to have to hit harder to finish points and make you miss. They're going to feel like they have to aim closer to the lines in order to put the ball away because they will. If you hustle, if you pick smart targets, if you make more shots in order to put away balls successfully, they're going to have to hit the ball harder and aim closer to the lines. They're going to have to take chances earlier in points than maybe they normally would want to. And all of this is going to combine to provide you with more free points. It's not actually free because we're having to work in order to gain these advantages over our opponent, but it's free in the sense that they're gonna start making more errors without you forcing them, which over time really stacks up and can give you a huge tactical advantage. Please hear me loud and clear. If you're currently a net rusher, keep rushing the net. If you're an aggressive baseliner, keep being an aggressive baseliner. I'm not saying you have to change your style, just simply that if you can learn from this example and adopt this tactic of hustle, of intelligent play, of high margin when you're in trouble, you will be a better tennis player, regardless of what style of play fits best with your personality and your particular set of tools. 
For more ways to minimize your errors and maximize your opponent's errors, make sure to go to TennisSecret.com where you can get free training that will show you three secrets to make half the errors in your very next match. This is critical to winning at tennis no matter what level you are, and the training is absolutely free, so make sure to go to TennisSecret.com. The third thing you should copy from Daniil to immediately start winning more points in matches is do a better job taking bigger, longer steps to cover the court more effectively. I know that's the opposite of what you've probably heard emphasized in the past. Let me show you some practical examples so you can hear and see where I'm coming from. So in this particular point, Novak is hitting a shot and Daniil is coming down into his split step right here. And we're gonna do quick analysis here of where he's beginning and how many steps he takes. So he's starting this sequence right here. Now let's count his steps. That's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So he just took four steps to go from the first red line to the second red line. These are the little steps that you hear emphasized so much from coaches and players. And the reason why he's able to do this is he didn't have very far to go. He was in balance. He's in a neutral situation here. And so he has plenty of time to be able to get himself in an ideal situation. Okay, moving on. He hits uh, the next ball to Novak. Novak hits the next ball right now. He just came down from his split step. And now he's starting here. And let's count his steps again. That's one, that's two, that's three and almost, almost, let's call it three and a half, like three or four, just to move that far. So he's taking a bunch of small steps, using the time allotted to him, getting himself into the best position possible, fine tuning his position, his spacing between himself and the ball, and then hitting his best possible shot. All right, moving forward in the same point, Novak's getting ready to hit. There's the split step from Daniil. He's starting right here. Let's see what happens this time. Here's step one, step two, step three, and there's the hit. So he just moved all the way over here with three big long steps. Why didn't he take six steps or seven or eight or 20? Why didn't he take 20 like little steps to be able to adjust and fine tune his position? Because his opponent did something that dictated to him less time and more court coverage required in order to hit the next shot. And so it's not up to him. If he doubled his steps, he would never get to this position because Novak has dictated to him a short amount of time to be able to get to the next shot. So these steps are much longer, they're much more athletic, they're very close to full strides. Think about this in terms of, like the Olympics were just on recently. Did you watch any of the sprinters, either men or women, doesn't matter? Did you see many small steps did, in the 100 meter dash? Did you see them taking teeny tiny steps like all the way down the track? No, of course not. They're taking the biggest, longest, most powerful athletic strides possible because that's the fastest way to get from point A to point B when you know you need to get there as quick as you humanly can. So here's Daniil's shot. He's gonna recover as best as he can. Novak's getting ready to hit the next one and here's his split step right here and he's coming down from his split step. He sees where the ball is going. And so he's starting from here. Let's count his steps this time. That's one, that's two. Look at how long these strides are. That's three, there's the hit. He just covered this much court with three steps. Well, where's all the little steps? Well, he doesn't have the luxury of using little steps because his opponent just put him on the dead run in order to cover the shot. Please hear me loud and clear. I am not saying that little steps are bad or they're wrong. We just saw him use little steps a couple shots prior when he was in a neutral setup and he had plenty of time. The key to being the best tennis player possible is using the whole wide range of footwork tools at your disposal. Little adjustment steps, medium steps, and big long aggressive athletic strides to cover as much court as you can. If you wanna to get to as many balls as possible and force your opponent to hit more shots, the big long ones are the ones that you should be practicing and optimizing so that you can cover as much court as possible and get as many balls back in play as you can. Put each of these things from Daniil's playbook into your own game, and I promise you'll be more successful and win more matches. And if you'd like to be more accurate hitting down the line and cross court with your ground strokes so you can call your shot and hit with pinpoint accuracy, check out the lesson that's on the screen right now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.